You are listening to the Riverbend Youth Podcast. We hope this teaching deepens your relationship with Jesus and encourages you to share your faith with others. Please enjoy the message. Well, who in here hates change? You hate change? Some of you love change? Like you're fine with everything changing and being unpredictable and spontaneous? That's you? That's fine. Okay, we're talking about change a little bit up front. So let me just get this out. Some change is expected, right? Like some of these things we, we expect to change, um, like fashion trends and tastes and food, whatever your favorite food is, hairstyles, places you hang out, musical taste, you know what I'm saying? Like if you just look at an old picture of yourself, you know that these changes happen and that they're totally expected. Like you're not going to be the same person that you were even just a few years ago. Like your clothes a few years ago, they were all from like Aero Post Tail and you loved going to Chuck E. Cheese and you had a bull haircut and listen to freaking Perry Grip. But this is me. That's me when I was a kid. And this is a perfect example. I had a mullet, dude. I mean, party in the back, business in the front. I'm here for both. Um, but this is not this is not me anymore. Just like if you looked at an old picture of you, that's not you anymore. Like now, you're cool, right? Like now, you're freaking awesome. Y- you weren't back then, but you are now. Like now, you have style. Now you have friends who drive, or you drive. Uh, some of you just drive me crazy. Like that's fine. Now your musical taste is better. Right? Like you're listening to Ice Spice and Olivia Rodrigo. And it's so much in the new Drake album. Like you're fine. These changes are expected. Some changes, I don't know what you're listening to. Don't tell me. It's all Christian music, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy. Yeah. Mm. Come on. Some changes unexpected, though, right? And unexpected changes have a way of really disrupting our lives, like really messing with us, right? Like stuff like when your best friend moves away or you move away or a relative gets sick or you get cut from the team or something like that. I don't know. Unexpected changes. They're a bummer and we don't always know what to do with them. But either way, whether expected or unexpected, change is all around us and everything is always changing. Like, in fact, I don't have to tell you guys this, but we're living in a time where things are changing more rapidly than they ever have in human history. So it's totally okay if you find yourself just wanting some consistency, some place where things are dependable and secure and steady. Like you just want things to just chill for just a minute and that's totally fine. For some people, family is that thing and we're in this series on family. So we're going to go here. For some people, your family is the thing that's rock solid and that it's consistent and dependable and safe and secure. When everything around us is changing, your family is the one thing that remains constant. That's always there for you, right? But for some of us, that's not the case. And it's okay if you hate change in your family because it's not really designed to change, right? Like, family should be constant, and it's set up and structured, and there should just be peace in the home all the time. But all of us, I think, probably know that's not usually the case. We experience all these ups and downs and change and shift, and there's divorce, and there's people moving out, and there's this tension, and it's messy. It's messy. So if or when change happens in our family, which it will, this is an inevitable for all of us, how do we handle it? How can we navigate it without becoming cynical or bitter and being upset with our family members or being even upset with God for allowing it to happen? How can we be prepared for change when they happen? And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit this morning. So we're going to get into the Bible. If you have a Bible or the Bible app on your phone, go ahead and open it up to the book of Ecclesiastes. We're going to be in the Old Testament this morning. Ecclesiastes. You got a little bit of time to find it while I set it up, okay? Ecclesiastes, most people think that it was written by a guy named King Solomon who asked God for wisdom, and God gave it to him. Therefore, he was not only one of the wealthiest people to ever live in human history, but he was probably the wisest person to ever live in human history. And so the things that he wrote down probably have some merit. The things he wrote down might be worth reading. 
because he wrote this book called Ecclesiastes as kind of a letter for his listeners to say, hey, here's all the things I know. I want to share them with you. I want to bless you with these things so that you don't make some of the same mistakes I made so that you could be blessed and be better as a result of these things that I know. So he writes this in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Chapter 3, verses, we're going to go 1 through 8. This is a whole paragraph, and it's kind of poetic, so hang with me. He says this, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. There's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. There's a time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. There's a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them up, a time to embrace, and a time, like, to re refrain from embracing, like, don't hug me, okay? There's a time to search, and a time to give up. There's a time to keep, and a time to throw away. There's a time to tear, and a time to mend. There's a time to be silent, and there's a time to speak. There's a time to love, and there's a time to hate, there's a time for war, and there's a time for peace. And he kind of goes on and you kind of say, I get the idea, Solomon, like, there's a time for everything. My parents or step-parents or whomever has probably told you this, like, hey, there's a time to speak and there's a time to be silent, right? And he's saying the same thing, but he's saying it over and over again in a bunch of different ways to just reinforce the point that change will happen. Change is coming. Things will not be consistent and constant and perfect. They're, they won't. As long as we're living in this fallen state with sin introduced into the world, like we're, we're not living in perfection anymore. So we're not going to be surprised when change happens. There's going to be dubs. There's going to be elves. Now, Solomon um, doesn't give us a lot of insight on how to navigate the highs and the lows, though. He just kind of says, hey, these things are going to happen. Like, sometimes things are going to be great. Sometimes it's going to suck. Cheers, mate. So to figure out <laughs> um, a little bit more practically how to navigate this, I've gone into the book of Isaiah. And you can either get there or just write it down now if you want. But in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, Isaiah is this prophet. So he, he had like a direct line to God almost, you know, and, and people, uh, or he wrote down what God was telling him. So that again, to bless the people. And he says this in Isaiah 43, verse two, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. This is allegorical and it's kind of like a word picture. So it's not li like literally, hey guys, whenever you're walking through fluid, I don't like that word, um, liquid water. It's not that it's, it's metaphorical. He says, when you pass through the waters, I'm going to be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you, pass, when you walk through fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Essentially, when everything around you is changing, God never will. He will be the one constant and consistent, safe and secure thing in your life. And only he can be. I think that this is why we desire this consistency is because God built it into us to desire him. We have this draw toward our creator and he kind of set it up originally to be satisfied within the family, but the family is broken. The family is fractured. We talked about that last week. So the only place that it can really be met and fully, truly, genuinely, and deeply satisfied is with God alone. God will never fail. Right? There's a couple of verses that have helped me out a lot. I've experienced a lot of change. My current family and in the family that I grew up in, the pictures I showed earlier, like that little kid, even just seeing those pictures, takes me back to a time that wasn't awesome. And... Um, these verses, man, like they helped me through my teenage years and into my adult life. And so I wanted to share them with you. It's just two verses. 
And I really just challenge and encourage you to write them down, commit them to memory, like put them in your phone whenever you just need a little bit of encouragement. And there are more than these two, but these have been the ones that have helped me the most. So kind of like Solomon did for his listeners, Rin is going to do now here for you guys. The first one is Philippians 4.8. And the Apostle Paul, who is just one of the pioneers of the Christian faith, wrote this letter to people in this town called Philippi. So they were called the Philippians. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. It's almost like a retraining of your mind when there's change happening and there's difficulty and trials, which we know we're all going to face. Like these things are impossible to avoid. But when they do, if we think about these things, think about the good. Like it's like a retraining of your mind to just say like, where is the silver lining in this? How could this end up for good? What is the, and like you might say, look, I don't see anything good about this. I don't see anything good about what's going on right now. There's no possible way. I would have said the same thing. But like I shared last week, my childhood made me a better father today. And I don't know if that's what it is for you. I don't know if you'll get to see it all work out for good. But man, it'll help you to just try to adopt this mindset when you're going through it. Just think on the things that are good, the people who love you about the, the ways that you're gifted and the ways that you're talented and how, how beautifully you were made, about, about the God who created you and his just magnitude and his intentionality. Sometimes I just look at like the stars or space or just look really small, like the, the micro level, like the quantum realm. And I'm just like, God is so crazy. Like he's in the biggest stuff and the tiniest stuff. And I'm just astonished all the time. And it, it just builds my faith. I don't know. I think about these things because they're excellent and praiseworthy and, and awesome and lovely and admirable. They fire me up. I don't know. The second one is Romans chapter 8, verses 37 through 39. And we're working on this discipleship curriculum, and we were just talking about this verse the other day. Um, holy crap. I, like, didn't get the... Is it in the slides correctly? Yeah. It's not. Holy crap. Okay. It says something like this. This will be a test to me. I put it in the wrong, the wrong slides are in. Yay. Um, I'm pretty sure it says something to the effect of that if someone was to help me out, you can. But it's like, I am certain that um, neither height nor depth nor angels nor demons nor rulers or things past or things present, like anything else in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Does it say something like that? Is someone there? Okay, come on. Um, and that's what I mean. Like, I, I know <laughs> it's on my heart. This is a tell. Woo! I would have looked real dumb right now if I was like, this is my favorite verse. I didn't know what it said. Um, but man, like, nothing will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Like, I tell myself this all the time, and so can you. Um, so as we kind of wrap up, look, I'm a person who loves change. If you know me, you know this. Like, people say, I I'm in a rhythm. I say, you're in a rut. I don't even take the same route to, to work every day just because I, I, I get sick of the same roads. Like, even if it takes longer, I'm just going to go a different route just to mix it up. I, I love it. I think I love change because things changed so much for me in my childhood, and um, that's all I kind of know. I don't know. Maybe it's a coping mechanism. I'm not going to psychoanalyze myself right here now in front of you, but I like it. And I think change in families is particularly hard. If you've experienced it, you know, because it's so personal and it's so emotional and it's so close to home because it is home, right? A change inside family can hurt like nothing else. It can leave deep wounds that are scars you carry for the rest of your life. And it is hard. I'm not saying it's not hard. I'm not saying, oh, just like choose happy and choose joy. And like, eh, eh, eh. like no, no, no. It's hard. 
period. You shouldn't have to go through it. It shouldn't have to be that way. My encouragement to you is that since it is, sometimes, also it's not your fault, but since it is sometimes, my encouragement and challenge is to keep your eyes on the one who will never leave you, who will never forsake you, who won't let you down, who can never love you any less, and just dive in and lean in to him. God can be your rock, and you are never alone because he is with you. And like, also, we are with you. We're in this together. And we're here. And so at least that is something you can focus on and think on. And remember, as you go through, that we're going through it together. Thank you for listening to the Riverbend Youth Podcast. To learn about our mission, gatherings, and more, please follow us on Instagram at rbu or check out our website at riverbend.com slash students. If you were encouraged by this message, please subscribe, rate us, and consider sharing our channel with a friend. Available anywhere you get podcasts.